Hi everyone, welcome to Engineering Physics 131 Final Lab. This is uh, Lab 10 and we're going to study the properties of rolling motion in objects. And we're going to conduct one of the simplest experiments that we can do in mechanics, which is to roll an object down a ramp. Specifically, our objective is to characterize the moment of inertia for an object that is rolling down a ramp. And in this ramp lab, we're going to be using the constant beta here, where beta is representing the moment of inertia, the true moment of inertia, divided by the mass of an object uh, times its radius squared. So beta is just a dimensionless number here. Now what you're going to do is to measure the value of beta for an object of your choosing and compare it to a theoretical model which is something else you will come up with. In your lab report, or in the lab manual that we're providing, you get a summary of a ball or object rolling down a ramp, uh, and the analysis of the acceleration of that object as it's rolling. So you can work through uh, that in your uh, theory to come up with the relationship for the acceleration of a center of mass of an object that's rolling down uh, ramp in terms of the gravitational acceleration, the angle of the ramp, where it's the standard angle at the bottom, and then 1 plus beta, where beta is this constant in the moment of inertia. So just as a reminder, that is the moment of inertia divided by m times the radius of the object squared. So what's nice about this particular uh, format is it doesn't actually depend on the mass of the object or its radius. It only depends on this uh, constant in front. Uh, so that's why we can do this effectively without having to worry too much about measuring the masses and sizes of everything. So what you're going to do is you're going to roll an object down a ramp and determine the acceleration from uh, one of two ways. Uh, the first is you can determine the acceleration from video analysis. This follows the exact same pattern that we did in lab 6 on the acceleration of gravity and lab 8 on the conservation of energy for a pendulum. And here you just go ahead and you measure the acceleration uh, by comparing the magnitude of velocity as a function of time and then fitting a straight line to that using the Linest uh, function in Excel or Google Sheets. And then you just make the association that the uh, velocity at a given time is equal to some initial velocity, v0, plus the acceleration of the center of mass times t, where the acceleration is just the slope of the line. So you can see here we can measure this out, and when I did my video analysis, I got my acceleration was about 0 0.68 uh, meters per second squared, and that corresponds to the slope of this line. We don't really care about v naught for this analysis, just the acceleration. The other thing that you can do in, uh, for timing, if you don't have a working copy of Logger Pro with video analysis in it, uh, we can also determine the acceleration from timing. In this case, you're going to measure the properties of your ramp, your geometry, where you measure the distance down the ramp as d, uh, and then all you're going to do is you're going to roll an object from the top down here to the bottom, and you'll do that 10 times and come up with an average time. Using those properties, you can determine the acceleration using uh, just straight one-dimensional kinematics, where it's twice the distance over the time squared. And so that'll give you your center of mass acceleration. I'll note that in all cases, you can determine sine theta directly from the distances in the triangle, the height and the horizontal distance. And you'll need to do that because this is the best way to figure out the error in that sine theta term, is to use the errors in your known distances. So without further ado, let's look at how we set up our experiment. The materials that we'll need for this lab are a round object. You can choose whatever you like, you know, something, it doesn't have to be perfectly round, like a piece of fruit, uh, some of the canned goods you've been hoarding. You'll need something to make an inclined plane. Uh, anything will do, textbook, uh, but longer is generally better. And then you'll want something to rest the plane on so you can actually incline it. 
So you'll need something to lift it up a little bit. And in this experiment, small angles work better. So you'll want just a tiny little displacement uh, up here. And finally, you'll need something to measure distance. If you don't uh, have a ruler in your, uh, wherever you're staying, uh, you can go ahead and print a ruler off of the internet. They have ones that you can just print straight onto paper. So to demo just what we're going to do, we'll set up an inclined plane like so. We're going to measure the properties of it. We'll need to measure the angle theta here that the plane makes with the horizontal. Uh, so we'll need to measure the horizontal and vertical distances inside uh, that, that form the angle. And then we'll need to do a video capture of an object rolling down the ramp. If you don't have access to Logger Pro video analysis, what you'll need to do instead is to get a watch or a stopwatch that allows you to measure time, and you'll just measure the displacement along the ramp here, and then you will time the time it takes to go from one end of the ramp down to the other. And you'll need to do that several times so you get a good, accurate reading. Here's some actual data collection. You'll want to set your phone down on a level still surface. You'll want to make sure that it is looking directly at the setup with as minimum of an angle as possible. And you're also going to want to make sure that you have an object of known distance in the frame. Just to cover some final points that you'll want to keep in mind, uh, to get started, find your objects, and then you should hypothesize a theoretical value of beta for your object. For example, if you find something that's close to a solid ball, go ahead and pick beta equals two-fifths. Uh, if you pick an object that is like a can filled with liquid, you're going to have an interesting time here because it's not a solid object. You should try to find solid objects since that's what we have our moments of inertia for. Go ahead and determine the acceleration as uh, set up earlier. Measure the distances of the system to find your theta. You can go ahead and assume that g is the standard value of g, 9.80665 meters per second squared. It has no associated error. And then you can use the beta determined by your acceleration measurement and compare that to your hypothesized value of beta. You will need to go ahead and do a full uncertainty analysis and submit that in a lab report. So this is really just a standard procedure, four-page lab report, extra data in appendices as required. Uh, as noted, you will need to measure uncertainties and everything contributing to your measure of beta. So that's going to be both your acceleration uncertainty, but also the value in the uncertainty of your angle. Justify the uncertainties that you have chosen to work with and derive any combined uncertainties you need to know. The only thing that's different about this lab report uh, compared to another one is that you must include an explicit acknowledgement section in the lab report. Even if you didn't get help from anybody, you can write acknowledgments equals none. Go ahead and give credit to everybody who gave you some ideas so that you should feel free to actually collaborate and share reports with each other. But bear in mind that you do need to write your own individual lab reports for this exercise. All right, that wraps it up and uh, good luck finishing up your labs. Uh, be, be aware of your uh, TA help sessions, which will be happening during your normally scheduled lab times. Your TAs uh, will be there to assist you there, on the lab forum, or even on email. We do not have any kind of virtual meetings. You just complete this exercise on your own and submit it by the due date.